This is an overview of Alice Corporation v. CLS Bank International, decided in June 2014 by the Supreme Court of the United States. Petitioner Alice owned patents to manage certain forms of financial risk. The claim in question detail a process for facilitating the exchange of financial obligations between two parties by using a computer system as the third party intermediary. So in other words, the patent claimed a computer implemented electronic escrow service. Respondents, CLS Bank is a global organization that facilitates currency transactions. CLS argued that Alice's patents were invalid and unenforceable and that CLS Bank had not infringed on them. The district court held that the method described in the patent is inel ineligible because the concept of employing an intermediary to facilitate simultaneous exchange of obligations in order to minimize risk is a, quote, basic business or financial concept. They relied on the ruling of Bilski versus Kapos, in which a claim describing the basic concept of hedging was determined as a fundamental economic practice and therefore not eligible for patent. Alice appealed this decision to the federal court. The judges were divided at first, but reversed the findings of the district court, but then affirmed the lower court's ruling after rehearing in Bonk. A five-member plurality opinion ruled all claims patent ineligible, while other judges filed separate opinions, some dissenting and some reaching the same conclusion, but for different reasons. So the Supreme Court said to answer the question of this case, which is, is implementing an idea on a computer enough to transform a non-patentable abstract idea into a patentable subject matter? Alice's patent claimed the following three things. A method for, claim, for, a method for exchanging obligations, a computer system configured to carry out that method, and a computer-readable medium that contains the program code that performs this method. The court noted that all of the claims are implemented using a computer. The courts have long held that Section 101 contains an exception for laws of nature, natural phenomenon, and abstract ideas. Granting a patent over one of these building blocks of scientific and technological invention would monopolize it as a tool and impede others from innovation and future discovery in those areas. To determine the patent eligibility, the court used the two-part examination process employed in the settling of Mayo versus Prometheus. The court first asks, are the claims directed to a patent ineligible concept? And if so, what else is in the claim? They consider all the elements in the claim individually and then as a whole to determine if there is a transformative qualities to it. The second question asks, is there an inventive concept? such as an element or combination of elements that ensures the patent is more than just an effort to monopolize on an abstract idea. The court found that the claims are directed to the abstract idea of intermediated settlement, AKA the use of a third party to mitigate settlement risk. Like the abstract idea of hedging from the Bilski case, this concept is considered a fundamental economic practice and therefore is not patent eligible. In the second step, the court agreed that the claims do nothing more than instruct the practitioner to implement the abstract idea of intermediated settlement on a generic computer. In other words, the method states to use a computer as the intermediary in the escrow process. This is not seen as a patent eligible application. The court relied heavily on the holdings of previous patent cases that question abstract ideas, processes, and computer implementation. The Mayo case made it clear that a claim must add more than just the words, apply it. The Benson case held that implementing an idea on a computer was not seen as a patentable application of a principle. And likewise in Fluke, it was held that implementing a principle in some specific fashion, such as a technical environment, is not a way to make an abstract idea patent eligible. Deer is the only case here that was granted a patent, but it was not because it involved a computer alone. If an applicant could claim an abstract idea by simply implementing it on a computer, it would make the determination of patent eligibility depend on the draftman's art and provide a way to circumvent the rule that laws of nature, natural phenomenon, and abstract ideas are not patentable. So it was held by the Supreme Court that the patent claim was nothing more than basic instruction on how to intermediate settlement risk on a computer. 
When considering each element of the claim individually, the use of a computer was purely a convention and added no value or substance to the underlying abstract idea. As a whole, the method, the system, and media claims offer no transformation or improvement in the field of technology, nor do they transform the abstract idea into a patent-eligible invention.